it's it, it seems from a just a conscious five sense level that all is bloody lost. You look at the news, you look at the control system coming in, and and if, if you only come from that perspective, then it well you know there you go stick them on don't, don't waste your time. That's right. And yet and yet there's another dynamic, the source to see dynamic which has been picking the lock all along, you know. When I, um, when I first awoke, uh, started to awaken, because it's a, it's a process that goes on, I met a psychic uh, in 1990 and stuff came through her, all of which has turned out to be true. And one of, one of the things that was said to me through her was, when it said I was gonna go out on the world stage and reveal great secrets and all that stuff, and, what are you talking about? You know, I'm a television presenter. But one of the things it said, what, the, the, the message said, no need for arduous searching. Um, it was all basically arranged a long time ago. The path is set. You just have to follow the clues. And when, when, you, when, when I look back at the last 20 years of my life, and you must look at yours too, uh, going back even, even longer in, in, in terms we're talking about, um, it has been like puzzle pieces just handed, handed to you. And, and, and that's not happened for a bit of fun. Okay, we've handed you a few puzzle pieces, and so you know a bit more. Okay, it's over now. No, it's leading somewhere. And where it's leading is this control system um, is, like everything, founded on a vibrational information blueprint. Uh, uh, it's its foundation. And when that's unpicked, the control system must fall. And there are uh, uh, people who have come into this reality, or at least are looking into this reality, which I think we more, more, uh, do more likely, um, who have a specific interconnected role in contributing to the unpicking of that blueprint. And, and it's coming down. It's coming down. It's, it's, it's destiny. It is written, however people want to put it. Um, it's coming down. And it, it will come down dramatically quickly once it reaches a certain point of being destabled, destabilized. And it's not going to be brought down by um, protests in the street, although, you know, protest by all means, as long as it's peacefully, uh, it's not going to be um, uh, brought down, really, by things happening in this reality, although that might contribute. It's going to be brought down by unpicking this vibrational lock, this vibrational blueprint on which this reality has been seized, hijacked, suppressed, and uh, controlled. Jordan, what do you think? Because... You, you have not always felt as optimistic as that, have you? I think David is right, but uh, but what he said originally, I was totally uh, in that category. I was looking at the world and saying there is, in fact, no hope, because <clears throat> the people, I say, humanity in mass, the human race, is not able to protect itself. It cannot set up any defense for itself. It's like I mean, we talked about this morning. I, I look at the human race on the earth as animals on the, on the Serengeti plains of Africa. They're just out there by the thousands, uh, just doing what they normally do. They're just in the sun with their offspring, uh, trying to make a living, trying to stay alive, while the lions are creeping up on them. Because this is why um, I, uh, good people have never been organized. Good people see no reason to get organized. It's only criminals that get organized. And the kind of people who are in power are in power because they want that power. And they have sold their souls to get into that power position. And the human race is just never going to be able to stand up against these kind of people who are organized and vicious in their, in their pursuit. But, um, and that's why I felt for so many years that it's just hopeless. <clears throat> and, I, and so what I wanted to do is just 
be uh, uh, able to, for the people who do want to know, for those people who are waking up and want to know, I want to be there to at least give them the best that I have been given, the best that I've been able to give, uh, to be given. But I'm not doing it thinking anybody is going to save this world. But, uh, and I still have reservations about where we're ultimately going to end up as a human race. But there does seem to be some kind of a, of a spiritual other world matrix at work. And that's what I'm really hoping for, is that we have cosmic companionship in what we're doing. And that there is something else going on, like the Knights Templar said, as above, so below. And I'm beginning to believe that there is something to this idea that we are all not real. We're not doing this by ourselves. Well, the idea of cosmic companionship is one that you've been telling us about for quite a long time because you've had direct personal experience of this. Yeah. So and there's your evidence. That, even with that direct personal experience, I still am very fearful. I still have profound doubts about everything, which is absolutely ludicrous because I've been given so many opportunities and, and heard so many good things and had so many experiences that proved to me that I have protection and guidance. And, and yet, I'm still on the human side. I, I still am afraid to go out. I'm afraid, to, as I know what these people at the top are like. And I know that they're not human as such. Mm -hmm. So they don't mind killing. They don't mind tearing me and throwing you into prison or whatever. And I'm afraid of, uh, I'm, I'm fearful for my life. But if they were ever going to do that, they would have done it already. I mean, they're a bit late, aren't they? <laughs> well, it's never too late. They can always drop in and do it any time. Right, but the time for them to to stop you is actually before you've done your work, not after. And so, yeah, well, I, and, and like I said, I've had, I've had some very serious things, not just threats, but then knocking on the door, showing up, feds knocking on the door with subpoenas and, and, and warrants for my arrest. The sheriff was out with a warrant for my arrest. I've had the federal government indicting me for uh, and some very serious stuff. And at the last moment, someone somewhere stepped in and crushed it. That was like the guy that you were talking about when Credo was just about to be set on fire, somebody shouted stop. It's, yeah. the, same, it's the same principle. At the last moment, it's the same principle. someone stepped in and saved me. I think um, this last moment stuff, and I've had it myself, is part of the preparation. Because um, the last moment means you have to trust. Uh, oh, yeah. and, I, and I've reached the point now where uh, no matter what's going on, I trust the outcome. Um, that it's going to be fine. I agree with you. And, I, and, I, and I, I, I get more and more optimistic the more that I know and the more that I uh, uh, expand my own awareness, the more optimistic I get. Um, these people are powerful within a box the size of a pea. Uh, and uh, they, they, ha uh, they have to keep humanity in a smaller box than they're in. It's not that they're all powerful. It's not that they're all knowing and omnipotent. They have created a vibrational um, control structure in which they are in a box, a tiny box. Um, yes, they have some intellectual capacity which allows them to, to play with technology. But it's an intellectual, it's a, it's a vibrational box. And they are limited to that box because of their state of being, because of their need to control. And what, what does the need to control mean? It means you are in a state of extreme insecurity. Only insecure and fearful people want to control others and want to control events. People who are at peace with themselves, they are. Uh, are quite happy to flow and, and take the, the outcome that, that, that comes. That's right. So, if there wasn't a threat to them, there wouldn't be any need to control anybody. You wouldn't uh, have to have any of these structures here. Well, the, 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 the entities behind the control system and their, their hybrid middle men and women, they, are, they, 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 they strut around as if they are um, uh, 
full of you know self confidence and, and all the rest of it. But again, you know, uh, you, you well, I have anyway. Met so many strutters. And then you get behind that front, and it's a frightened little person behind it. The strut is just to hide the frightened little person, and that's what we're dealing with here. So to control humanity as they have, they have had to put humanity in a smaller box than they're in. And so they have created this control system that is designed to isolate the awareness of the target population within the five sense reality and to disconnect us or disconnect our awareness of higher high levels of uh, consciousness. Once um, you, uh, uh, as a human being, break out of that uh, vibrational straitjacket of five sense domination and you start to expand your consciousness, you are expanding it beyond the box that they are limited to and cannot expand out of unless they change their state of being. If they change their state of being, they don't, no longer want to control anybody anyway, so whether we expand beyond their box or whether they expand beyond their own box, the control system must fall either way. Either they don't want to control anymore or they ain't going to be in control because the expansion of human consciousness is going to bring an end to the control. And once you expand your consciousness, uh, you are accessing, and anyone can do it, levels of awareness that um, not only give us the picture of what's happening, which this uh, control system wants to keep from us, it also connects us to what we call protection. Because we um, create our reality in our heads, like a computer decodes information from the wireless internet. Uh, the base construct of this reality is an information waveform information uh, construct. And f f just like the wireless internet, it's here, all around us. And we are, we are decoding it through the body computer into um, a, a holographic world that only exists in our head. Therefore, what we decode dictates our experience. And if we are of a state of expanded awareness that is accessing higher levels of um, knowledge, information, awareness within this construct, um, and we do not um, fall into the trap of decoding uh, the belief that we can be taken out, the belief that we can, we can be uh, uh, stopped, then we can't be stopped. Because if I do not decode that information, I can be stopped, I can be assassinated, through from the uh, vibrational, through the electrical into the holographic, it cannot manifest in my experience. It cannot do so. And, um, it, and the number of whistleblowers that I've come across uh, over the years who have um, constantly told people, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to do this before they take me out. What are they doing? They are um, falling into that um, information construct level that says, I can be taken out, I'm allowing that into my possibility, I probably will be taken out, I don't know how long I can keep going now before they take me out, um, you know, and it is me war medals and me war with wounds because I'm a hero. And to put it in layman's language, they're expecting it to happen. Of course they are, and, and that's the whole point, and, and, and so it comes from, 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 from the, that, that construct through to the electrical, into the holographic, bang, bang, self-fulfilling prophecy. It's not, uh, it doesn't have to be self-fulfilled, but what you, what you perceive and believe, you have a fantastic chance of experiencing. And, I, and I'd say now, no one can take me out, no one can stop me, unless I decode it into my experience, and I ain't gonna do it. So. End of story. And, 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 and also, on top of that, 
you've got um, other forces at work um, which are also ensuring that that process of decoding that outcome does not happen. Uh, and uh, people, people say, I've heard it over the years, when is the cavalry coming? The cavalry, if you want to call it that, is already here. It's in the space, or what we call space, that we're experiencing. But the cavalry is only the cavalry compared with the control system because it's vibrating to a higher level of awareness. It's not, when's the cavalry coming over the hill? It's when are we going to go vibrationally over the hill and connect with the cavalry? When are we going to realize that we are the cavalry? Well, well we, we, we are, we are but, 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 but to, to, to manifest that most, most powerfully and effectively within holographic five sense reality, we need, to, we need to connect with those levels of awareness, those levels of, con of, of consciousness that can, that can give us this, this massive power for, 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 for transformation um, and, and bringing an end to this control system. Because the control system is absolutely uh, manifested out of low density uh, levels of awareness. That's what it is. It's low density. It's dense and it's... it's, it's uh, uh, it has a, a solidity, it doesn't have movement, it's, it's a very dense energy field. And what, 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 what's happening now is that that energy field is starting to be broken up by uh, this energetic change uh, that's happening, what I call the truth vibrations. And as the, uh, the energetic um, uh, density is broken up, the blueprint, the foundation on which the whole dense uh, control system is created is coming down you know it looks so solid oh my god just look at it it's an impregnable control system but its foundation is a vibrational blueprint that is doomed and is in the process as I speak of being unpicked by this vibrational change that's going on and the more people that open to this vibrational change the more people then become generators and uh, uh, communicators of this vibrational change and the whole exponential curve goes up. Um, you know, we're in, we're in a fantastic time now where um, uh, we're moving epochs, we're changing epochs, or the epoch of, of density, of, of, of what people call darkness, of suppression, of desire to control. And we're moving, we're at this cusp now and moving into an epoch of, 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 of fluidity, of expansion of consciousness, of harmony, of awareness, of lack of fear. Lack of fear equals lack of insecurity means lack of desire or the feeling of need to control. Can you see this, Jordan, among some of the people around you that, this, that these changes are taking place? We are all three agree that we are being, the human race is being dominated by higher intelligences are inhuman or other than human, I would say off-world uh, intelligences. And my question is, <clears throat> uh, or my thought is that until something is done about this other world presence that's been building this world for us and keeping us stupid, until something is done about them, uh, what do you think is, uh, is, the, is what do you think is going to be the outcome? Because unless this reptilian or or, or other world uh, intelligences, whoever they are, and I'm totally convinced that, that we are being manipulated as a human race by other world intelligences. Right. And if that is true then no matter how much we are awakening and, and spiritually evolving, something's got to be done about them, so to speak. Well, I would say that this is all completely connected, because this, this I don't like to use the word spiritual, it has religious connotations. This vibrational change, this expansion of consciousness, these, these, these truth vibrations, this, this next epoch, this new yuga of human experience, um, it is a vibrational uh, quickening. Now that vibrational quickening uh, uh, carries a new, higher level of, of knowledge, awareness, understanding. This is why the people tuning to it are suddenly, whoa, seeing themselves in the world in a different way. But it's not just about um, affecting humans. 
it's affecting the reality itself. And these um, manipulating non-human reptilian entities and other entities as well, and there's some benevolent uh, non-human entities involved a lot, are also being affected by this vibrational change. Um, and their vibrational home stadium is the old epoch, the old energetic construct. And they built this control system on the old energetic construct. And, 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 and uh, part of that has been the fact that humanity connected uh, consciously to that energetic construct has been in a state of suppression. Instead of expanded uh, awareness, it's been like, oh, I'm just Joe Public, or oh, I'm Charlie Smith and Ethel Jones, and I've got no power. So that makes the control system real easy. As we expand um, beyond the box they're in, because we can, then that becomes more and more difficult. But that's only one level of it. The real thing that's bringing an, an end to the control system is the very vibrational basis on which it's been built this density is breaking up. And as it breaks up, the house's cards must come down because the holographic play-out control system is just a holographic representation of the vibrational blueprint on which it, it is based. When that goes, this has to go. And, and so it's all happening at one time. And for me, it, it's absolutely no accident. Um, that it's at this very time when these truth vibrations, I call them, are starting to massively impact on human awareness. My goodness me, I mean, I remember 20 years ago, I mean, my goodness me, I, things have changed, Jordan, haven't they, in terms of the, the number of people who are going, whoa, hold on a second, the life's not like I thought it was. I'm not like I thought it was. So these truth vibrations are impacting on, on all, very, very um, uh, powerfully uh, already. And um, the, the whole thing is, is going to um, move on. And so the, uh, it's no accident, like I say, that it's at this time when this is happening that they're throwing everything at us in terms of the control system. They've got, uh, they've got HARP, which is um, uh, in, in many ways uh, there to uh, create a sub-reality because it's sending out radio waves on the same um, uh, uh, frequencies as brain waves to try to affect the way we think and suppress our thoughts. Um, they're, they're, they're filling people with um, uh, chemical cocktails in food and drink to destabilize the body's ability to tune into these changing vibrations. Um, they're, they're creating a, a sub-reality through microwaves and electromagnetic pollution. Even mainstream media is talking about the soup we live in now, particularly in the cities. Um, they want to bring the microchips in to externally su uh, uh, suppress the vibrational state and the, the e electrical state of the body so we're not tuning into this, this new awareness that's there to be tuned into. And, and, and all these things are happening. And, and again, when... Um, you are in a state of fear and chaos and what's happening and oh my god you are in a low vibrational state that's what fear is that's what we, we, we say oh, i feel so I feel so tight today i feel so heavy today heavy it's a low vibrational state so another thing that they're doing at this time is trying to create as much chaos in the world so that people uh, uh, um, the chaos uh, through not least through the uh, global economy etc and wars and what have you, terrorism, um, because they want to make that affect our vibrational state. And there's so many other things, of course, we could all list. And it's no accident that they're throwing that at us now, just as this epoch-changing vibrational change is happening, because they're desperately trying to defend. I, I would say this, uh, I've been saying it for a while, what is happening now is not about these people gaining more power because they've had all the power they wanted up to this point. Because while humanity was not aware that they were being manipulated, they weren't aware that their resources were being stolen, they weren't aware that their, their energy was being vampired, these guys could go on uh, controlling us forever in that state. Then 
What is happening now is not about them gaining more power. It is their desperate last death throw attempt of the control system to hold on to the power it already had. And the reason that, that, that it's now manifesting is because um, they, could, they can see down what we call the timeline from their uh, level of observation uh, just outside of our um, visible light reality and therefore they could see this time coming. They've been preparing for this for, for ages sure. to throw it in now. And that says many things. It says a, a, an incredible thing uh, about what's happening, and that is the power of this transformation, the power of this awakening, is, is, is so profound that they have to throw all this stuff at us to try to head it off. And they will head some people off. They will keep some people in the box. But um, the tide is turning. The tide is, the, most crucially, the tide is vibrationally changing. And they're going to throw it. And for the next few years, the next few years, it ain't going to look for a second as if, uh, from the perspective of the vast majority of people on this planet, that anything's happening other than the control system is, 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 is uh, getting its way. That the control system, the Orwellian control system, the fascist global state is, is actually going to get what it wants. And people are going to say, oh my God, we're doomed. And then, and then, the tipping point's going to come vibrationally. And this is going to come down so fast, eventually. And I'm 58, and it's going to happen well before I leave here. Because I want a bit of the other side of the epoch, thank you very much. I've, I've had all this side. I want a bit of that side yeah. before I leave here. And what you've been saying has, put, has reminded me, in the Jewish tradition of mysticism, there's the idea of a golem. And this was a monster which can be created out of your thinking that actually becomes a living monster. Right. But it requires your the collectively thinking about this monster and it comes into being. Once it comes into being it has its own its own agenda. It has own, its own awareness. Yeah. Yeah. But it requires everyone believing that it's here first. And then it can be brought into being. It's called the golem. Uh, and it's, as I said, it's a, it's a very old ancient Jewish idea that you can create a monster if you believe it. And if you, and well, that's basically what you're saying. Uh, what you need to acknowledge, Jordan, is that the work that you've been doing that started 48 years ago actually is one of the things that the controllers are reacting against because you were one of the first people to stand up and start frightening them with the release of information that was never meant to be made public. Yeah, well, I know. That's, yeah, I, I, I look at what has transpired in, in my life in the past 48 years and I'm, I'm amazed watching the transitions that I have gone through and the world has gone through too. Because you must have seen a lot in the in those forty eight years. Yeah. I'll you must have seen I mean I remember back in sixty two, sixty three, sixty four, when John Kennedy, before John Kennedy was assassinated, the day he was assassinated, I was on my way downtown in Los Angeles to East LA to give a lecture on secret societies and world religions. And and I, when I got in the car to go, I heard on the news that John Kennedy have been assassinated. I mean, I've been talking about uh, the, the influence of the dark side manipulating us uh, some, you know, as far back as 63, 62. And, uh, but there's, I, I, I feel that there's some kind of a other world intelligence that is manipulating us and probably it has been here before we humans were here. And, uh, it represents a very, very powerful presence, an uh, evil presence. I'm sure, as you as you have said, you're right that there is a, 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 a Bill, you have said the same thing, about there is a, a spiritual balance in the universe and that there's a good side uh, also. But I feel unless and until this other world power is exposed, uh, we as humans are not going to be able to extricate ourselves from this, you know, this tragedy. We, you know, 
the world has got to understand that we're not being ruled by humans. We are being ruled by an other world, off-planet, uh, for lack of a better term, alien life forms, which uh, care, couldn't care less about us as humans. It I completely matter. agree with that. And of course, uh, you know, you know we're, we're at one on that. My feeling is that there are other forces. See, I'm not, I'm not talking about humans removing that. I'm talking about humans waking up to it, and some humans have come here, what we call humans, because we're just consciousness, humans just a program on this planet, have come here to play a major part in removing that by removing its vibrational uh, blueprint. But these other forces in the unseen are going to sort that overwhelmingly. And those within this reality are going to play a part with that level of awareness in doing that. Because you're absolutely right, unless that is done, then the control system goes on. Because the, the, uh, the, that which is controlled up to this point will still go on controlling, but it's not going to. It's, it's going to have the shock of its life. Because you know, the way I see it, that's all I can say, the way I see it, but they put humans in a box smaller than they're in. So humans have a certain perspective. Um, not a very wide perspective when, if, you, if you're only there, and that's, a, that's what it's meant to be from the control system point of view. Then you have another level of awareness, which is the, the, the entities controlling. And from that level of awareness, um, the continuation and expansion of the control system is a done deal. They, they actually think it's just got to, got to play out. They think, they're, they think they're there. They think the game's over. But there's another level of awareness, which that, the control system, uh, uh, level cannot access, which has um, got a whole different outcome manifesting. And this level is impacting more and more into what we call human society. And somewhere, not a lot further along this road, if you like, it's going to massively impact this tipping point I'm talking about. And the control system, which thinks it's, a, it's game over, is, 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 is going to um, have the shock of its eternity. Uh, I, you know, I, I've been through this whole uh, last 20 years of my conscious awakening to this. And there have been times through uh, the 90s and, and, and whatever when I've thought, what can we do about this? What's it meaning? You know, you can't see an answer to it. But I tell you what, I've never been so totally sure that um, in my lifetime it's coming down. Our kids and grandkids are not going to live in an Orwellian fascist uh, control system. They're not. They're going to live out most of their lives um, in, a, in a world of potential, of expanded awareness, of uh, inc because uh, as the, the epoch changes, it gets more and more that the truth vibrations uh, will dominate uh, awareness rather than the, the, the suppressed epoch we're coming out of. And they're going to live out most of their lives, young people today, especially the, the very young, in what we would perceive in this epoch as a paradise, a utopia. Um, compared, not, 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 there, won't be, not, there won't be challenges, but compared with. What, what we've come through. And we are, we are real privileged people, and we've chosen well. Uh, when I say we, I mean everyone in the world today who wants to play a part in this, because it's just a choice. We are at the cusp, but we, we're, we're playing a part, and anyone can play a part in, in, in this transformation. What, what a wonderful thing, what a wonderful thing, when we leave this um, body computer, this genetic space suit, and we, we, we go back to, 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 to where we've come from in pure awareness and we sit in the bar and we think, job well done, I'm glad I did that. Um, and the worst thing that can happen to us when we are making this contribution, if we allow ourselves to decode it, is someone uh, takes us out. Now, if someone takes us out, now what happens? My awareness leaves the limitation of the body lens, the body computer, 
and expands into um, simultaneous awareness of all that is. Oh dear, I'm terrified of that one. It's the worst that can happen. I'm totally understand. That's the worst that can happen. And, and, and if we can just um, come from that perspective and, 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 and therefore see that as the worst that can happen, then there are no limitations anymore on what we will say and what we will do. Um, we'll do what we know to be right, we'll say what we know to be right, and consequences can take care of themselves. Because in the end, we are saying and we are doing, but we're also creating the consequences of saying and doing. We have the power to control both. And um, when we realize that, game over the other way. Let me tell you two experiences that I've had um, that bear on what we're talking about. <clears throat> I was in Hawaii many years ago with my wife and some friends. We went to Hawaii and we were sitting in a restaurant right across the street from the Hilton Village. And in the restaurant, I had my back to the, to the door and someone came in I, and I didn't know, I had no idea who it was. Someone came in and an electrical shock went through my body. Mm -hmm. Just as if someone come up quietly with the live wire and hit you. And, uh, and I threw, I knocked over the, the, the stuff on the table. It was an electrical shock. And, and all I could hear in my head was, get up, run quick, you're in trouble. Your life is in danger. And involuntarily, I didn't think to do it. I just got up and started running, which implied somebody else was in charge of my brain and my mechanisms because I wasn't even trying or thinking about running. I was just running. And all the time I was running across the restaurant, uh, I could hear in the voice saying, quickly, get out of here, your life is in danger. I ran through the back door, I ran through the back lot, and it was a main street uh, the main boulevard and the voice said run across the street quickly run across the street and I yelled I can't run across the street it's a, it's a traffic here and this is no no one's gonna harm you run across the street and involuntarily I ran across the street I didn't even decide to do it and as I ran across the street it just so happened that there was no traffic for that moment and then it said, run around the outside of the hotel. So I ran around the Hilton Village Hotel to the ocean side. And, and then it said, you're all right now. Now you're safe. You're okay. And I sat down by this little pool, and I was out of breath. And I kept thinking, <laughs> what did I just do? My, my wife is sitting there with them, with our friends. The stuff is all over the floor. I look like an idiot. I have no idea in the world what I just did or why. And the voice was saying to me, you're okay now, now you're safe. I came back to Los Angeles a little while later, identical. I was sitting in a restaurant right on Wilshire and Fair Fairfax, a little hamburger stand at lunch, <clears throat> and I was sitting at the counter and peripheral vision, I saw, I didn't see them, but I saw two guys walk in. And when they walked in, immediately it was an electrical shock. And I almost fell off the, 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 the chair at the counter. And the voice says, get out of here quick, you're in trouble, run. And so I stumbled, I had to get up, I stumbled on the floor, I threw some money on the counter and I ran out the side door. And the voice kept saying, you're in serious trouble, run quick, your life is in danger. And I ran all the way up Fairfax, about three or four blocks, until the boy said, all right, you're safe now. Now you're safe. Sit down. And I sat at a bus stop. My heart was pounding. And I thought, that's the second time this has happened. What in the world is going on? Because it was involuntary. I didn't, I know what I was told, but I wasn't thinking to do it. I was just doing what I was told to do. <clears throat> and I'm telling you this because I have been told uh, many years ago and, and, and over and over by many different people as you have had psychic readings I have also and I've been told you have been brought here you have come back they have brought you here or you've come in to do something 
This is not just by chance you happen to have been born and God did that. No, no, you have come here to, to incarnate into this world at this particular moment in time. And so it appears to me that there is some kind of a cosmic war going on between higher intelligences, good ones and evil ones, out there that we're not aware of. And the good ones are doing something with the human race while the evil ones are doing something with us. And so we are merely pawns at a bigger and more serious being played out to protect or secure the protection of the human rights. I wouldn't say you're a pawn, Jordan. I say you're at least a bishop. <laughs> and maybe a king or a queen. <laughs> It's funny, but, but I, the, what you're describing I'm, here with this different approach to life, shall we say, I would say are these, these two epochs, that it's at this point, these two epochs, this, this is the one of suppression, it represents the one of suppression, and we're at the cusp of this new epoch, and because we're at the cusp, they're both playing out together, and so we've got this situation that you're describing. Do you know when you were talking there, you know what I was seeing? I was seeing that scene from The Matrix where Neo is in the office and he receives the, um, uh, the phone in the FedEx package and he, he opens it up, it's a phone, and then Morpheus is on the phone saying, okay, you're in trouble, okay, get down very low, go across the, the, the corridor and then do this. Now that for me is very, very symbolic of what I call the, 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 the quiet voice the quiet voice, which talks to us through intuition. And what happened, of course, with, with Neo is that he, he followed it okay for a while until there was a real challenge. The quiet voice was saying, get out of the window on the tower block, go around that partition and go down the thing. And it was like the conscious mind got control of Neo at that time and overrode the quiet voice, intuitive knowing, intuitive guidance. And therefore he got caught. Now this is the challenge that we have. Uh, what changed my life totally, more than anything else uh, in 1990, was I decided that if my head and my intuitive knowing were ever at odds, I was going with my intuition. That, that, and, and what happens is when you do, you get yourself in some scrapes. But, but the more you do it, like, like using a muscle, the, the more, the, the louder the quiet voice gets. Um, this is what Gandhi talked about. The, the, he said, what, what did he say was the effect of, uh, the, the only tyrant that I listen to is the quiet voice within. Words to that effect, close to that. And, um, and the choice is, are we gonna follow that silent voice, that intuitive knowing? Because if we do, we're following the level of awareness that can see the game from source to sea. If we can't, then we, we, we're stuck in, in uh, five sense mind reality, which can see the next turn on the river. So th this is the challenge for us. Um, if we can follow that intuitive knowing, like you clearly did by reflex action, then um, we'll never get into, into trouble. And if we do get into trouble, we'll all, always get out of it. And this applies to everyone on the planet. But because uh, people, uh, because the intuition, because it comes from a totally different level of where awareness and perception of this reality, what it's urging us to do often, this, which is programmed from cradle to grave to see life as we're programmed to see it, it's going, you can't do that, you got that's crazy, you can't, oh, we can't do that, what about this, what about what? It lists all the reasons why you shouldn't follow this. And if we do, not only will we be uh, protected and, 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 and as we talked about but we'll also be guided to fantastic amounts of information which are waiting for us if we follow that that this is telling you you shouldn't go there tomorrow don't you you've got an appointment you can't go there I don't care what you're saying you can't go there you've got an appointment you know? uh, no no I'm going to cancel the appointment I have to go there and when you do something is there which gives you a, a, a massive insight that this would have denied you had you gone with it um, and most people, because of the programming, are welded to this reality. And therefore, they go round and round in this circular 
You get up in the morning and then you go to work and then you come home and you have your tea and then you watch telly and then you go to bed and then you get up and you go to work and then you come home and you have your tea. And that's what mind does. It loves kind of repetition. Intuition, flow. Intuition, flow with higher levels of awareness, source to see awareness. And suddenly when you do that, your life becomes incredibly synchronistic. Amazing coincidences and miracles happen. I mean, you know, we've all experienced it, haven't we? And it's open to everybody to do that as long as you let the head intellect serve consciousness instead of govern. The way I put it is when you follow intuition, you live life. When you follow mind alone, life lives you, which is what happens with most people. And so, we, we have access to this incredible library of knowledge, this incredible library of guidance. And it's not the chosen ones, but it's those which are um, willing to open their minds to access that level of knowledge. It's not a club. You don't need a login code name. It's sitting there in the space that we are now experiencing. What the, all we have to do is open up. So like I said earlier, instead of saying, when's the cavalry coming, when are we going to the cavalry? A Buddhist priest said, the, unfortunately, there is no uh, key to the universe, unfortunately. But the good part is that there was never a lock on to start. Uh, exactly. Yeah. But, exactly. Uh, they, but uh, going back to what I was saying, it implied, my experience implies that it was not a quiet voice, it was, it was, it was a, 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 an emergency that my life was in danger. And it implied, this whole experience both times, implied that there is some kind of a military type operation going on with these extraterrestrial reptilians, whatever these off-world entities are that have been manipulating us, there's kind of like a military thing that's going on. Some good entities, for lack of a better term, uh, good extraterrestrial powers. I mean, this is nothing new. Christianity and Judaism talk about good angels, the bad angels, or whatever. So it's implied that there are good and evil entities here in my perspective, Jordan, though, that, that they are another level of this energetic playing out. You know, that they, they are attached. You, you, I mean, we think we're human, and, and it's just one species of, of existence within five sense reality. Um, but there are other non-human uh, um, entities who take other forms, um, but are also subject to the choice between which of these... Um, uh, energetic states, these consciousness states, are they going to choose? So it's all playing out. And when you say about, when I make a quiet voice, uh, the quiet voice talks to you quietly, uh, but when you are in trouble, like you appear to have been, it can grab you by the bloody collar and launch you out there. You know, my, my feeling is the more I, I kind of understand this, is this, this, this guidance of those that are playing a part in, in this transformation, it's much more powerful than we realize, and it's much closer to us than we realize. But we don't really become totally aware of it until there is a, a panic station situation, and suddenly, boom, um, it says this is going to happen. Because if it was a case of we come in here to try to make a contribution, and then people trying to stop us, um, can come up and go bang, bang, thank you very much, uh, you know, mine's a large one. What's the point of us coming? So there is a very, very powerful force which is there for those that have come to play a part. And um, at its most extreme, it can yank you out of a dangerous situation. Well, see, I appreciate what you're saying, but again, I'm coming back to my experiences have made me believe that we are in a military kind of thing going on with, in fact, other life forms, which are higher life forms, which are unseen, uh, as you talked about, and I've talked about too, the reptile alien right. presence. What are we talking about, reptile alien presence? 
I don't know exactly what all of this means, but I know it's there. I've heard way too much not to know that there is a reptile alien presence on the earth. Right. Where did they come from? How really powerful are they? How long have they been around? And what, what is their relationship to us? How, how much can they do to us and manipulate us? And when I had those two experiences, those experiences told me that there's some kind of a real dangerous military action going on. And sometimes you might possibly, as I did, come into close proximity with other alien life forms that are very evil. And well, there's no doubt about that. And, and, if, and if you do, the ones who are protecting you will quickly get you out. Like yeah. the FBI gets out their, their men in the mafia, and he's been spotted, he's been found out. The government has to go in quickly and get you out. Why? Because you're a dead man. They found out who you are. Get him out immediately. Mm -hmm. Whatever it takes, get him out of the place. So I felt that this is what was happening to me. It was as if all of a sudden, out of time and chance, two other alien-like entities came in. They looked like men, they weren't men. And immediately, whatever was protect protecting me, no, right. like military says, get out of here quick. Well, that implies there's something going on here militarily from an other world point of view. But it also implies that you're protected. Well, and, yeah, but and, and what we have to remember is that these, whatever these forces are, they're not all powerful, otherwise we would not be able to have this conversation. Well, they're, certainly, they're certainly not all powerful. But, see, the point I'm making here with you is that I understand and I'm totally in agreement that there is some kind of a, uh, of a change in the epoch, the change, because I understand the astrological right. concept of a changing of the yugas and the changing of the... Of the uh, it was an epoch of time. Right. But I'm still convinced that there is some kind of an evil presence here, like a military. They are organized. Well, what I'm, what I'm saying, um, and what Jordan is saying, uh, are different expressions of the same thing. Because when I'm saying you know, that the base construct of everything is consciousness, and there is a... Uh, a changing of the guard in terms of the energetic uh, or state of awareness in this reality. We're at this cusp. Of course, at one level, it's pure energy, it's pure awareness. But as it comes down the levels, is it, that, that, that expresses itself in different ways. So on the human level, you've got people who are awakening and people who are still closed. You've got people that, that want kindness and peace in the world and you've got people that want to control and manipulate and exploit and parasite off. And one of these levels it takes the otherworldly level that Jordan's talking about, which is of non-human entities in this tussle for um, either control of this reality or benevolent protection of this reality. And they too are expressions of this energetic epoch change. It's just which level of it are we looking at? So what I'm saying and what Jordan's saying about this um, this military kind of kind of battle, if you like, uh, uh, is absolutely the same. Because on one level, that is what's happening. Because it's an expression of this change, and because it, it, it's the, the, it's expressing itself in so many different ways, and that is one of them. And it is fundamentally affecting this one which is the human level, because what's going on there? Uh, what I'm saying is that because this energetic transformation, this expanded awareness is now coming in, as, as it becomes more powerful and the, the tipping point comes where the old epoch energy is replaced by the new epoch energy as the, the dominant one in this reality, then all these different levels of malevolence uh, whether they be non-human, alien, or as we call them, down into the, the really the parasite world, their day is over. But it's not over yet. And like I say, for a while, this is, is it, all these different. This this is really going to be challenging. There's going to be great upheavals because we're not in the new epoch. We're at the cusp of the changeover, and this is the most chaotic and and uh, and difficult and most challenging. And so we go, we go up. At all these levels, we're going to 
see amazing things going on. And uh, there is definitely what you might call battles going on in this non-human level, absolutely. And both in the Jewish and the Christian and even in Islamic tradition, uh, there is talk about uh, uh, the spirit forces at work yeah. in the universe. Evil, and, uh, like I said, Christians talk about the good angels or the demons and the devils, and they're equally as, they're, e they're very, very bad. While the angels are very good, angels are very good, and they're protecting us. But they are actual entities who are at war in the spirit world with each other, and and they have their people on the earth. The bad ones have the bad, and there's some kind of a matrix of war going on between the good and the evil and, uh, on the earth, and it plays out in, in a very uh, reasonable, legitimate military fashion. And there are evil forces that are watching you, that are trying to stop you, while others, good uh, entities, are coming in to protect you and, and to, keep you, uh, to keep you safe. Uh, so uh, in my vision <clears throat> is that we are, if we are in the physical world, we are being played by higher powers who have a design on us. Maybe the good ones have a design that we are supposed to evolve and to, you know, and to grow in wisdom and knowledge and to blossom out into godly creatures with wisdom and knowledge and have a better civilization, a better life. While on the other hand, there very well might be entities from out there who are the enemies of those good ones and they have in mind controlling this this system here. None of this nonsense about evolution and for people to grow in peace and harmony. No, no. They've come here to own us, to control us. And therefore, I see it as a real, legit, legitimately um, military darkness are going on. I think there are evil forces here, and there are good ones that are watching us. And they are at war. And this is what the Knights Templars were implying with their symbol of as, as above, so below. Meaning, if you think it's bad here between military and armies and bloodshed, you should see what's going on in the spirit world. There's a very powerful spirits at work on both sides, good and evil. You talked about two powers there. Okay. Is there you've talked about two powers there. Is there not a third power, which is our own power? Because if we want to change the world, the way that we have to start is ourselves. We can't directly, necessarily, do anything about these factors that you've been talking about. But if we change the way that we perceive the world and relate to the world and see ourselves in relation to the world, then we can disempower those forces who've got a hold on us. And this is my interpretation of what David is saying. That's a question. <laughs> Well, I think that this whole idea about the kingdom of God, uh, the ultimate good kingdom of God on the earth, I think that's an astrological uh, subject. And unless one brings in astrotheology and the astrological uh, component of the kingdom of God, we're never going to understand the kingdom of God. I think the kingdom of God is a, a time period an astrological time period when the human race will finally wake up and get in tune with the divine universe and throw off all of this dark force around us. But uh, I see, and I understand and totally agree with, with David about the spiritual implications, but I'm also seeing that there's actually a military operation, for a lack of a better term, a military operation of dark forces which are very legitimately evil, which have a tremendous amount of power that, that to harm we humans. On the other hand, there are, there are those other world entities who are here to protect the, the project of human evolution, to protect us. Uh, and there very well might be, as David said, <clears throat> levels. And, but, but up till now, the level that I've been concerned with is that level that, that sees a military operation going on. Well, I think, you know, when you, you're looking at a... Um
a massive insider like um, George Lucas, uh, when he produces uh, like the S Star Wars movies, that's the level you're talking about. That sort of stuff is going on. That that's not taking place in a galaxy far, far away. That's much closer to home, and that's that's the level you're talking about. And I agree with you. But I'm saying is that's a level of this 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 energetic. Uh, level playing out down the levels right down to the human and I tell you the way I see it anyway um, I, I, what I what I'm saying in, in, in my new book is that um, the black holes like the one in the center of this galaxy are vibrating uh, the base vibrational state of this this reality but it's not stable in the sense that it doesn't just stay forever vibrating in the same way. It goes through a cycle. And so the, the, it goes through this, this vibrational cycle and eventually it comes back to the start. And, it, and in the play out holographic world, it kind of seems to take the form, because of the way we decode it, as the top, what I call a time loop. Um, it's what the, the, the Asian uh, and the Indian uh, people call yugas, mm -hmm. the different yugas. Um, and, and as, as the, this, the, the black holes vibrate this base vibrational uh, construct, this base vibrational foundation. It triggers information from the suns to be uh, transmitted in the form of photons, photon energy, which is information. And the, the, the energy going through the, the acupuncture lines, the meridians, uh, is photon energy as we decode that information. The Earth's energy grid has photon energy going through the grid as the Earth decodes that information. And as this vibration changes, and, and whoever created this virtual reality universe, in other words, this massively advanced computer game, they created this vibrational cycle. And as it goes through its cycle, the information coming from the suns in the photon energy changes. And so, it, we, and we're decoding these things, this change. So we go through periods of what the ancients called the golden age, when this massive expansion of awareness and connection and, and harmony and all the rest of it. And then there are other periods where um, the energy and the information is much more suppressed and limited, and, 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 and these different cycles go on until it comes back from the start, the whole thing starts again. So consciousness, because you know, at the, end of, at the end of the day, for me, I can only speak for me, um, when we are at the, at the realm of consciousness, pure consciousness, we see this whole game completely different. I mean, we're seeing it through the lens of what we call the physical body, and then we're seeing it a certain way, and it focuses our attention in the five sense world, which is why we look out of our eyes, and, or think we do, and, 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 and see this world, and it's our base, main, prime sense of reality. But before we choose to come in to, not that it's necessarily in, but let's get too detailed here, um, before we choose to come in, that level of choice is made by consciousness in awareness of itself, disembodied awareness. When we come into this reality, we are trying to perceive why we're here and why we would choose to be here, if people believe that that's, that's what we do, and I certainly do, we're trying to understand the choice through the limited lens of the body, a choice made when we were in a state of consciousness. It's like the, the, the oracle in the matrix where she says, you've not come here to make the choice, you've already made the choice. What you've come here to do is understand why you made the choice. And so um, you'll say to people, well, you know, there's not someone on another level with an AK-47 saying, get in that body or I shoot. You chose to be here. So if you chose to be here, why did we choose to be here? And sometimes we choose to come in certain parts of this changing epoch for really big challenges, which in an embodied sense, for one of a term, we'd go, I chose to do this, you must be having a laugh. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, f I feel that what this epoch change is that I, I'm talking about is this vibration is now moving from one period of this time loop into another period of this time loop. 
And um, through this uh, period of suppression of what we would call darkness and um, uh, limitation and control, a certain consciousness, because the base state was so applicable and uh, uh, supportive of it, has been dominant. But now as, as, as this, we go into this net, another epoch uh, of a greater expansion, the vibrational foundation of this reality is no longer, increasingly by the hour and by the day, supportive of that awareness, consciousness, in all its forms, whether it's alien in spaceships, or whether it's pure consciousness, or, or whether it's humans manipulating humans. It's no longer supportive of that awareness. And as, as we move further and further through the cusp, where there's a changeover, and both are active, like we are now, into where the, the new epoch energy will be the dominant one, as that has been up to this point, then that which has been manipulating here will not be able to manipulate there because the energetic environment will not be in any way conducive to it. What we've got now, and this comes back to your, uh, your point about this kind of military war going on, uh, on the kind of Star Wars level of it, and I absolutely agree with you, um, is that because we're in the changeover, this stuff is now, um, we get both, we get both, and, and the, the tussle is on. Because up to this point, what you, you would call the, the, the dark forces, the manipulative controlling forces, they've been playing at home. They've been the dominant force. Now it ain't happening anymore. There's something else is coming in. So we've got this war, this war going on. Um, and uh, it's not that this, this level of, um, uh, the benevolent alien has, has, has suddenly manifested and appeared for the first time. It's, it's, it's been, in, it's been uh, um, in existence all the way through this, but it's not been in a conducive energetic environment to impose itself on this reality. Now increasingly it is, and so we're now seeing the two and the tussle. But the tussle's a done deal because the energetic environment is no longer conducive to this, so something different must change. And that's why uh, what we call the future, which is not really the future, it's just the changing uh, energetic uh, environment, um, is, is, is one that is going to be very different to this one. And yes, there is a tussle going on, yes, there is a battle going on, but the outcome's a done deal. Well, like we... In my view, anyway. What we were talking about this morning, we both agree that, that people have seen reptile aliens and they are very evil and very real. Absolutely. And that's what I'm talking about because if there are reptile aliens here, which I totally believe because I've heard way too many stories over the, all the last 40 years, I've heard major stories about this. So I'm totally convinced that there are reptile aliens here. I couldn't agree more. And, and so that being the case though, uh, they are real, legitimate, evil presence on the earth with us. Yep. Now that implies that there must be also some very legitimate and real other entities here who are held here for our good or to protect us, or to help us. And that's what I'm talking about when I say that there's a, that there's a military operation going on on the Earth. These, these reptile aliens are legitimate. They're real. But their, well, I can only say what I feel, Jordan. Their energetic um, preeminence through this period is now having the rug pulled from under them because we're going into a new energetic epoch. And these are very low vibrational entities. You know, they're, they're very clever, but they have no wisdom. They have no wisdom, otherwise they wouldn't do what they do. But they're very, very clever. And cleverness without wisdom is the most destructive force you can come across, which is why they're very, very destructive. And, and uh, uh, so they are, have been clever and they've used technology and stuff. Which, you know, you can, you can get very advanced technology in, in these uh, intellectual states. But the intellectual state is a very low level of awareness. And... As, as, as we move, we're moving into this new energetic epoch, 
their ability to dominate as they have, that rug is being pulled from under them. But like, like I say, in this um, changeover, that tussle you're talking about between those reptilian entities and those which um, are, are, are um, seeking to remove their uh, control of humanity all this time, that they are together in what we call a battle. Uh, but what I'm saying is the outcome's a done deal. Uh, I understand, yes. Yeah. yeah. But then you will agree that there is, in point of fact, some kind of a war going completely. on. Completely. I completely agree with that. I completely agree with that. What I'm saying is it, that, that, that war battle is an expression of the consciousness epoch that is manifested, manifests itself as these... Uh, oh, I see. control freaks, yeah. reptilian entities, and the uh, consciousness change that's coming, this epoch energetic change that's coming, that, that it manifests as those that do not want to control. Yeah. And th at the moment, because we're on the cusp, we've got this battle at that level. And it manifests down into the human experience as the Illuminati families, uh, representatives of this uh, reptilian control system, and those who are representative of the epoch energetic change, that is, if you like, I don't, I, I don't want to battle with anyone, I don't want to fight anyone, what you fight you become, but, but using the terms that you, 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 you are, uh, and the themes that you're using, that battle here is manifesting as a battle here, and, uh, but the, the energetic change will eventually wash away that which it are, it are manifestations of the old energetic blueprint. Um, and that's why our kids and grandkids are not going to live in a fascist global state. Although for a few years it is going to look like that. Because we're at the cusp and, and uh, the control system is, the control system is, is, is going to be kicking and spitting and, and trying to impose itself for the next few years. But sorry guys. Have a cup of tea, forget it, open your bloody minds, stop trying to control, because nothing to worry about, because you're infinite consciousness anyway, and, 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 and just get on the airbed and, f and, and flow with a bloody new, new energy. Stop fighting, don't be silly, you know. Uh, I don't, I don't uh, fear these entities, I feel for them, I feel for them. I mean, imagine, imagine waking up in the morning and realizing that they're still them. Terrified of everything, terrified of, 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 of their food source, terrified of their resource source, all, all um, dependent on humans staying asleep. And we ain't staying asleep. Vast numbers aren't anyway. And so they're, they're going to wake up um, even more fearful with every passing week that their food source and their, their, their control system and their means is, is more and more under threat from an awakening humanity. I mean, you'd rather you than me, guys, you know. Come and join us, let's have a beer. Stop being so silly, that's what I say. I understand what you're saying. <laughs> As people awaken and expand their consciousness, and we go into this epoch, this, this old expanded epoch, this higher vibrational epoch, then we are, humanity is gonna be moving into vibrational states, more and more people are, where these vampires, of the old epoch, they can't make the connection anymore. And they lose their power source. There's, there's an incredible change in the global, indeed the reality, energy dynamic from this to this. And, and it's going to transform the reality that we now perceive into something extraordinary, incredible, amazing um, for our children and grandchildren to spend most of their lives enjoying. There is, on this earth right now, dark forces that are from somewhere else, and there are good forces here from somewhere else, and that they are playing out some kind of a war, as we've been discussing, uh, some kind of a, of a control factor is, is being uh, at war with some kind of a good force that's trying to uh, save mankind, during this transition. Which and you're from somewhere else as well. You gave yeah. us two hours of video to testimony. Well, I mean, I just said that. that. Yeah, I just said that. 
and I think we're all probably from somewhere else. Most of the people watching this video are probably from somewhere else. The pawns in the world are the people who you have sometimes made reference to who don't have a clue about what's going on. But there are many who are realizing actually that they too are also from somewhere else, metaphorically or literally. And they're, they're the cavalry that we've been waiting for. We're all here. The cavalry are already here. We've just got to wake up. See, I think, I think the, 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 the big picture is that we're all from everywhere. Um, you've got this, this infinite consciousness, the infinite all, all that is, has been, and ever will be, ever can be, all possibility, the silent all, uh, everything and nothing, uh, everywhere and nowhere, all possibility. We're, that's the core of all of us. And as we experience these different uh, cosmic games, um, we perceive that in increasing l senses of limitation compared with the core of our being, all possibility, what I call infinite love, we perceive ourselves to be from here or from there or from, from wherever. What planet do you come from? Um, when actually we're, we're, we're everything that is, has been and ever will be. And that applies to the, 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 the forces that people call evil. It applies to forces that people call good. The difference between those two is merely their point of observation of reality at the point they're observing. And it's like, I don't quote the Bible very much, I'm famous for it, but the prodigal son. Um, the son goes out, uh, causes, uh, you know, this, and he's supposed to be a bad son, and the good son that doesn't leave the father um, is the good son. But then the prodigal son comes back and the father welcomes him with the same love, affection as he has for the son that stayed with him symbolically, didn't go out into the, the dark world, the dark level. And, um, and that's what we're playing. We're playing this, this cosmic game which through the lenses of physical bodies, um, or what we perceive as physical bodies, um, it affects fundamentally our point of observation. And a, a reptilian in terrible fear of not surviving and therefore I have to control everything because I feel I'm surviving and all that stuff is a point of observation. A very desperately limited, dense, rather pathetic and more than that sad point of observation of self in the world. But in the end, all will be gathered in. All will be gathered in. And that which is currently considered evil, and that which is currently considered good and enlightenment, eventually will remember that it is simply all possibility having an experience. And the more you expand your consciousness and awareness to understand that that is what we are, the more your point of observation goes from the size of a pea, I am Ethel Jones, I am a reptilian and I need to manipulate people, to I am all that is having an experience. And I can have this experience, but I know what is having the experience. I've not fallen for the uh, illusion that I am the experience. These reptilian entities think that they are their experience, that's why they're so limited and, and rather pathetic. They have manipulated humanity to believe they are their experience. What is happening as this epoch change goes on is more and more people are remembering that they're not their experience, that they are having an experience, but what they are is something different. And as that shift takes place, as a massive energetic shift takes place, and the ability of that level of awareness, the controlling system up to this point, to go on controlling, House of Cards is over, it's gone, it's gone. You can't do it anymore. And that's what we're experiencing. Well, I'm totally Fantastic time to be alive, by the way. I'm totally convinced that we're on the same page, we're seeing the same thing. I couldn't agree more. It's your final words, Jordan, because this is evening here, as those of you watching this video can see from the dark, uh, descending on the world outside of the window here, metaphorically only. And um, we've got dinner on the table, which we have to stop and eat in a moment. Not a bad idea. And a week or so ago, Jordan, we talked about 
the 19-year-olds, the, the guys and girls who, were, who are your age when you had the remarkable experience with your girlfriend's father. And they're waking up in hundreds of thousands all over the world watching this video and many others like it, wanting to know what's going on, not being told the truth by their parents, teachers, or the government. What are your words of encouragement for them? You can have the last word here. Take it away. All right. You asked me for my subjective opinion, and I'll give you that. What I would suggest all people, all people, hearing my voice and watching this, should do um, is to quietly find a place where you're by yourself and quietly ask the Spirit, talk audibly, talk audibly to the Great Spirit that men have called God. I don't care what you call it, but the Divine One, the, the Presence of God. I believe that there is a very powerful presence watching and protecting us. And so I would suggest talking to that Great Spirit and asking it to protect you, to guide you, and to uh, have you be, meet whoever you're supposed to and, and to fulfill your destiny if it has one for you. So that's what I would suggest to all young people start at that point. Just talk to God, so to speak. Talk to the Spirit and ask the Spirit to protect you, to guide you, to show you what you're supposed to do, what you're supposed to learn. Once people do that, the adventure starts. The adventure starts. That's when life becomes the adventure, when you get to that level and you flow with it, like Jordan said. And, and life is no longer a drudge. It's a joy and it's a, an, an adventure that, that, that just becomes a joy to experience. You're exactly right. Um, it's the real self not the one that we've been manipulated to believe in, the false identity. Right. And, and that's the difference. False identity, epoch, past. Real self, epoch, unfolding. Great time to be alive, honestly. Great time to be alive. Let's go for it. Well done, mate. Cheers. Thank you. Nice to what a pleasure. Nice to talk to you. What a pleasure. Or talk with you. Yep. <laughs> what a pleasure. Happy to be with you, David. Five stars, gentlemen. Well done. High fives, definitely. Doubles all round. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. That was good. Okay, Jordan, you've got to say something profound here. Goodbye and good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and bless you, my son. That's about as profound as it's going to get tonight. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>